Hey, everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest and California Weather Watch doing today's eclipse forecast, April 3rd edition. We got four days, 22 hours and 37 minutes to go until the eclipse forecast. So some of the logistical problems with this forecast is if you're going to go out there and try to hope to find some sun breaks on the actual day when it's occurring, when you got a lot of clouds around, just remember that like as you can see, I'm close to San Antonio here, and you really start to reduce your duration of totality. You're cutting almost two minutes off of it by going back towards the city here versus if you stay right on the center portion of totality there at four minutes and 26 seconds. So if you're like rushing around and you're like, well, it's clear in Austin, so let's go there. And you click on Austin, you got, you're got you cutting it down by two minutes there. So just kind of remember that when you're trying to pick a target, if you're still thinking about going maybe to the northeast portion or maybe someplace across the, maybe Indianapolis, for example, or down into Mexico as well. So you got to kind of weigh all these options. So also this website is pretty cool because you can click on this for any given location and you can see what time the eclipse exactly starts. You can see 12, 16 central daylight time. And then you can see just how long it takes to completely cover the sun there. And then you can see when it ends there at about 2.58 or so central daylight time. So a very nice site here. This is timeanddate.com. Now this is the actual path of the eclipse. You can see Mazatlan is down here. And then we've got the totality here. And you believe me, you want to be in totality. It's a night and day difference. I've mentioned this in other videos as well. And uh, yeah, so it's a big monkey wrench being thrown into it because it looks like there's going to be even, even potential for some severe thunderstorms across portions of Texas, maybe in uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas eventually as we go through the afternoon of Monday, April 8th. But, you know, this, uh, Texas was, you know, it's such a good a long duration solar eclipse event that it, it, maybe it's just worth it to go to Texas and hope that you get a little bit of clearing during the early afternoon there before the severe thunderstorms get going and you just happen to get lucky or you try to choose a place that may actually be more clear. So let's take a look at that forecast here. I'll show you those cloud maps here in a bit, but you can see on day six, actually day five, Actually, no, this is day six. So this is for Monday. And this is already introduced the risk for some severe thunderstorms that clip Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Dallas, Texas here. So they're going to be dealing with this threat as well. So if a lot of eclipse outlook, you know, people, a lot of eclipse viewers are out there, uh, this thunderstorm outlook is not going to be favorable here because a lot of people could be out. You know, the traffic gets really backed up and it could take you many more hours to get back home or to where you need to go for that night. And you could actually get caught in some of these severe thunderstorms. So if we take a look at the most recent European, now the 06E and the 18Z European model are coming into view here for Monday, April 8th. So you can see the system moving through the plains, strong subtropical jet stream is going to be going here across a lot of the south central USA, all the way back down across Mazalon. You can see the storm system at the time of the eclipse on April 8th there. So that's what we're dealing with. And this is a look at the GFS, and we're looking at that subtropical jet. You can clearly see the troughing here across the west, and that strong subtropical jet stream there at 39,000 feet <clears throat> is going to be spreading some of those clouds up over the area and possibly spawning severe thunderstorms by the afternoon hours. So here we're looking at the European on the left versus the GFS on the right. This is yesterday afternoon's run. You can clearly see that plume of clouds as the eclipse is occurring. So, I mean, maybe northeast Texas or Arkansas during the daytime might be better for clearing. And you can see right now, across portions of Illinois and Indiana here and Indianapolis and maybe Cleveland out there, you look like you might be getting a break here. And Maine has consistently been showing to be free of clouds. But this takes into account the infrared satellite imagery. There could still be low clouds and things like that that still obscure your view. So you got to take into that into account as well. Now, looking at the European total cloud cover, you can see the problem here as the subtropical jazz is going to be spreading these mid and high level clouds across the region. Mazatlan's right about there. I mean, maybe you get lucky and you get a break here. Maybe across some of the mountains of Mexico and maybe things will mix enough during the afternoon hours again like I mentioned but right now it's looking like some portions of Illinois Indiana maybe Kentucky where it clips it right there as the best area uh, for viewing this eclipse and maybe Ohio there as well and then maybe again Maine who knows how this is going to go exactly but this has been pretty consistent and the model runs right now so I am still undecided on what I'm going to do I'm thinking about maybe just trying to go a bit further north and setting up here and hoping for the best there as well but there's always the chance that the sun could break out for some areas across Texas as you go through the day 
And I've kind of outlined these areas here as well with that total, total solar eclipse here. You can see the path of it coming across the region. Don't, this isn't the exact path. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up of where you want to be here. Maybe start to make some plans to be in these areas. I don't know, unless you feel like gambling and trying to get down to the longest portion of the eclipse and down into Texas where you might get some cloud breaks out there. But yeah, interesting stuff. I mean, this is really becoming a tough forecast here, and the models have been really consistent for many days now, so we do have high confidence there are going to be a lot of clouds around a lot of the south-central portions, potentially affecting Mexico, and we'll continue to break this down day by day. We've still got four days to go. Things can still change, even though the models have been very consistent with what's coming, so we'll keep checking back daily, and I'm going to try to fine-tune my forecast. I'll let you know where I'm going to be. I will also be live-streaming that day probably on both the California and the Pacific Northwest Weather uh, Channel. I'll probably have two phones with me and just stream to both uh, channels there and let you guys see the crowd and whatnot for those of you guys who can't make it down to the eclipse area. But anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow, crossing my fingers and hope we can get some uh, a better outlook there on the cloud cover for this very unique solar eclipse event on April 8th. So anyway, I hope you guys are liking these videos. I'll do my normal briefings tomorrow for the channels, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch and California Weather Watch, and I hope to see you then.